Hey everybody, it's Marnie again, another edition of Be Live from uh, womensfigures.com. Our guest today is Angela Alexander of Fontana, California. And you and I are both sitting in the warm spots today while everybody else is dying in the north and center. But right before we came on, we did pray for you. So just know if you're freezing to death, we really, we've been there, we know, we get it. <laughs> and uh, I'm so excited to have you here, Angela, and you have such an amazing story um, about, uh, well, I'm just gonna let you tell the very abbreviated version of it. Well, I was in Japan on military duty, and while I was there, my husband and four children were driving down the highway here in California, and a car cut them off. And our truck hit the center divider, and upon impact, they were all knocked unconscious. And then our truck went back across that highway and fell 25 feet below and landed upside down on top of two other parked vehicles with people inside those cars. Praise God our car fell on their engine and not their roof. So those people, they were extremely shaken up, but they were okay. However, my two eight-year-old sons passed away instantly at the scene, and I'm in Japan on military duty. And I'm telling you, since then I have retired from the Air Force, and I wrote my book titled Miracles in Action, Turning Pain into Power and Grief into Peace. And Marnie is titled that because although my sons died instantly at the scene, God allowed both of them to write and leave behind these incredible goodbye letters. Maurice did not know about Roger's letter, and Roger definitely did not know about Maurice's. Individually, they listened to the Holy Spirit and obeyed. God gave me exactly what I needed to stand right here and praise his holy name. Oh, that is so incredible. And you are such a beautiful example of coming back from, you know, really not the brink of death. You really lost them. They're, they're gone from yeah. death and yet to, into life, into this full robust life that you have. And I want to talk to you about your book in just a couple of minutes. But um, first, let's talk about your first quote, which is peace is priceless. Oh my goodness, peace is priceless. If you had asked me the day before my son's passed, Angelo, what would you do? You know, we always get that question. What would you do if something happens to your children? Right. I right. can't remember answering that question. You have to lock me up, put me on the crazy ward, do what I have to do, go live your life because I'm through. And I could not believe the amount of peace that I was receiving. On that plane ride coming back from Japan, I kept pinching myself because I couldn't believe that, first of all, that I still knew the alphabets. <laughs> Right. But I still lose my social security number because I, I had, um, I, I had perceived that I would go crazy, and when that didn't happen, the only reason why that didn't happen because Jesus Himself intervened on my behalf, and said, "No, we're going to change this so-called tragedy into a miracle in action." And I'm telling you, when God told me to share this testimony. I was like, oh no, God, I'm not an author, I'm not a speaker. I gave him a laundry list of why I couldn't, shouldn't, wouldn't. You know, <laughs> and for, for months I walked in disobedience. But I'm telling you, and finally I woke up and I said, I surrender all, God, use me as you choose to. And the peace that God gave me is. Uh-oh, are we there? Yeah, we're having a little glitch up here, I think. Give us a second, we're gonna...
Let's see. I see you. Okay, well, we are waiting for Angela to come back in. I'm here. Hopefully that can happen. I'm here, you can't see me. Mm. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. Technology, right? Okay, let me see when it works. That's my famous line. It's great when it works. Okay. So so it looks like she's been able to log out now. So we'll see if she can get back in here, hopefully. Hopefully we can just resume where we left off. Oh, this is the first with Be Live. I've had such great, um, great success with this host. And, and I know things happen and it could be at my end too, but okay. Let's see if we can get her back on here. Are you guys able to do comments? Because right now, um, uh, not seeing comments. So I'm going to try something here while I'm waiting for her to come back in. This may cause a little bit of feedback, but hopefully not, right? Okay, so I can um, see myself and I wanted to see if there's comments here. Um, can anybody who's joining yes. us live, can you hear? Can you hear me? Okay, there we go. Yeah. I don't know what happened. So I just went off and came back on again. That was the only thing to do. That's what I had to do too. Well, thank you so much. Okay, so we're going to just go ahead and go forward from that. It was a, a great moment and we got as far as we got. So let's go ahead and start with your first uh, moment. You were talking about peace is priceless and how you had this incredible um, God-sized peace that just came over you. And I just am, I am just curious if you've ever experienced anything like that since. Since nothing that strong. Well, that was the yeah, most, I'm sure. Was, right. That was, you know, because well, I've always heard, you know, that peace that surpasses your understanding. And I've heard that my whole life read it, but I never experienced that peace until right. that moment. Well, right, because there's actually in America where we live, you know, there's just not that many times when we need that level of peace. You right. Know, definitely in a grieving moment is that kind of time in a massive um, crisis. Again, you know, God can just swoop in with that. And just be such a miracle provider. I want you to hold up your book. We're going to do the next. Your aha moment actually is the name of your book, which is The Miracle is in the Action. And, and you also have that. Is that a story on DVD? I have. My book has been turned into a documentary film. So, so I'm awesome. so excited. I'm so excited. Yay. And it's called Miracle in, in Action. action. <laughs> yep. So tell us a little bit about how you came up with that title. Oh my goodness, the week my sons passed away is like it was like miracle after miracle after miracle was just happening. Just the fact that I received, you know, the letters. I received Maurice's letter a month before the car crash. Almost a month before the car crash. And I received Rogers after I got home back home from Japan. And Maurice Maurice's letter, he was in the third grade. He had a math test at school, finished early, received his A. Now he had to be quiet while his classmates completed their tests. And in that quiet time, he wrote this letter to me and my husband. Now he had never written us a letter before, so this is not one of many or any. And he ran in the house from school the afternoon. He shouted, Mommy, Mommy, Daddy, Daddy, I wrote you a letter. I wrote you a letter. I said, what do you mean you wrote us a letter? Where are you going? <laughs> And he says, no, Mommy, I just love you. I said, baby, get the checkbook because whatever brother wants, the brother can have too. 
<laughs> and <laughs> he, wrote three, he wrote three pages, not only expressing that he loved us, but sharing why he loved us. And at the end of all three pages, he wrote the words, bye-bye. Not B-Y-E, B-Y-B-Y, meaning we'll see each other again. By and by, we'll see each other again. Wow. And then Roger's letter, um, <laughs> the Thursday after the memorial program, the, the, the Thursday after I got home, I was standing in my kitchen. I was praying. I was crying. I was praying to God. Thank you so much for Marisa's letter. It's truly the reason I can stand here right now. But I need to know that Roger's also at peace. And God laid one word on my heart. He said, search. And I'm telling you, I searched my house for over three hours, didn't even know what I was looking for. My family thought I had gone crazy because I flipped their mattress. I took their backpacks, got into them in the middle of the floor. Wow. I didn't know what I was looking for and didn't find anything. And that very evening, as only God can create it, as only God can orchestrate it, that night was open house at my children's elementary school. I had four children in the same school, second, third, fourth, and fifth grade. We went to, and my girls, they needed some normalcy in their life. Their friends on the block was going to open house. I said, you know what? We're going to go as well. Because we left a house full of people, you know? And we went to Angela's fifth grade class, Angelina's fourth grade class. All of their classmates, they wrote us these hand condolence, love letters, and poems. It literally took me months just to read through the boxes of love. And then we went to Maurice's third grade class. When I walked in, this hush just came across the room because the parents didn't know what to say to me. And frankly, I did not know what to say to them. Right. But they circled around me because they wanted to tell me how much they loved and already missed their friend Maurice. And then we walked into Roger's second grade classroom. And I spoke to his teacher, Mrs. Blassie, for a little while. And I asked like all the parents, all the other parents, what did my son do for open house? And two weeks before the car crash, Mrs. Blassie had given all of her second graders all kind of arts and craft supplies and said, do something for open house. Your parents are coming with no other instructions. And Roger cut out the shape of a house with closed doors. And all the projects were stapled to the wall. I took it down. I opened it up. And it says, Mommy, I have a big backyard and a big house. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop right there because we actually have the smallest backyard on the block. <laughs> And I had to remember at that moment, he was in transition mode. He was referring to his heavenly home where he does have a big backyard and he does have a big house. And that reminds me of scripture, John 14, 2 and 3, where Jesus said, in our father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, which he just said he would. I'm going to come again. I'm going to come back and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And I'm telling you, this is the scripture that gives me great peace. This is the scripture that allows me to say, all is well. Yeah. With yeah. my soul. Right. <laughs> it is. And, and, and yeah. I'm telling you, I am, and that gives me great peace. That's why I say peace is priceless. Mm-hmm. Because it brings joy to my heart that my sons are where I want to be one day. They are they they are there, they're in their salvation. They are there. They are joyfully jamming with Jesus. They, they are. are. They are. Yeah. And there's so more those beautiful. letters, but that's just a that there's he wrote well, more. That's that's what's in the book, and that's what's <laughs> on the back of it. You guys can go find those over there. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Oh, but it's just such a you know, um, I remember after my dad died suddenly and he, he did that same kind of thing for us where he just, first of all, supernatural peace that was just like completely unbelievable. And then all these hugs, just these uh, one after another miracles, miracles <laughs> where, you know, you just saw him and he was just saying, it's okay. He's all right. He's with me. You're going to be okay. <laughs> you know, but your story is just so um, huge and, and I'm so, Oh. Okay, before we run out of time, I do want to um, hit a couple more quotes of yours. Okay. And uh, we'll be publicizing these around two later. But um, one of it is, is you can search for your miracles or your misery. The choice is yours, but whatever you want, wants you. I love that last line. Whatever you want, exactly. wants you. Exactly. Oh my goodness. It's you so true. Miracles or your misery. 
the choice is really yours. I mean, I could be, I could have a doom and gloom life and complain, you know, my sons die and, 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 but, or I can flip the script and say, you know, let me search for the miracles instead of the misery. And, and without put that energy out, guess what's coming back? That same miracle energy is coming back. Cause whatever you put out comes back. You know, what you sow is what you reap. And it goes back to scripture. Yeah, I just love that. I love that. And it's just so true. And so many times we choose so poorly. You have power. <laughs> right. Keep your power away. That's right. Don't you let nobody steal you. your joy for Jesus. Okay, one last one here. You can search for your, oh, no, no, that was the one we just did here. God is, oh, this is, we all know this one, but I love what you say about it. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I truly believe this statement, even on my darkest day. So how do you get there? Even on my darkest day? Because you can't say, you know, first of all, that's a statement, not a question. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Oh, period. Okay. Yeah. That's just not when, that's just not, you know, when, when, when you can pay your bills and everything's great. That's even when the foreclosure comes. That's even when the divorce comes. That's even when your son's passed away. That's every single day. And I not truly believe that statement. Even on the day my son's passed, God gave me instantaneous peace. I can't explain it. He did it. And so, and so that's just my personal, personal testimony that even on my darkest day, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. But you have to search yeah. for your <laughs> And you just really, I mean, kind of the crux of it is, do you believe that? It, it's right there in Hebrews eleven six, 6, where it says, in order to believe, in order to please God, you must believe, one, that he exists, and right. two, that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Well, yes. when do we ever most diligently seek him is when we're in trouble, right? <laughs> when it's painful, when it's confusing, when it's just, you know, there's no hope, whatever. We diligently, diligently seek him in those times. And he said the, the prerequisite to that is to believe that he's going to bless us, that somehow yes. he can yes. bring something good out of this. And that changes everything. Every single thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we could say, we could stand back too and say, you know, even though none of us would ever choose this for any of our children or loved ones, your boys have just leapfrogged all of the pain and struggle in the whole world and <laughs> got straight into eternity. <laughs> yes, they were eight years old and they passed away on April Fool's Day. And so the two little practical jokers went home on the funniest day of the year. So it just, just brings oh. me joy. Yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. And that God prepared their hearts for it too. Oh, I mean, what a comfort to you. Yeah. I sit and imagine <laughs> them in there because, and it's so funny because both of these letters were written at school. <laughs> Wow. Well, they said, you know, can't bring God in school. Both of these letters written in school, and that's and that's one of the reason why I, you know, in the in this in the documentary, their teachers are in this documentary sharing the day that they wrote those letters. And I just imagine Roger sitting in his, you know, second grade class, is cutting out, uh, oh, just cutting out, you know, this house and wrapping arms around the house, and just and and Jesus just preparing him to come home within the next two weeks. Yeah, it's amazing. I know. It's so incredible. And yet they didn't know. If you would have asked them, oh, like yeah. he said, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, exactly. I'm not going anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. I said, where are you going? He says, nowhere, mommy. I just love you. But, mm -hmm. but, but, but I do believe that um, the, the Holy Spirit, you know, had touched them in a way that's not the way that they could articulate or comprehend it on, on right. a human level. But spiritually, they were in preparation to go home. Just love it. I love you. I love your energy. I love your ministry. I love your willingness to tell this story. And to oh take my goodness. Once, and I, you know, once I surrendered, <laughs> it became my pleasure. But those first yeah. six months, me and God argued. I'm telling you, he won. <laughs> Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. Right. And you guys want to um, definitely check out Angela's ministry. Um, what is your personal website page? Miracles in Action. Dot com. So M-I-R-A-C-L-E-S-I-N-A-C-T-I-O-N.com, miraclesinaction.com. Absolutely. And you can check out her speaking ministry there or over at womenspeakers.com. Just type in her name or click California and you'll find her there. And uh, just so great to spend this time with you, Angela. Thanks for your love. Thanks for your life. And thanks for sharing it with everybody. 
for inviting me. I appreciate it so much.